Hello! So, it is the first day of Vlogmas. It is December 1st, obviously, and I'm gonna be doing Vlogmas. I have never tried to do Vlogmas. Um, the only time I have successfully, um, done a, uh, vlogged every single day for a month was in April for the Owls Readathon. So, hopefully I can pull it off again. <laughs> but I'm not gonna be doing a video every single day. That's just way too much work, so I'm gonna be posting bi-weekly so that, um, I don't just have Vlogmas videos up during December. I want to have some other videos, so yeah, that's why last week I had my autumn wrap-up, which I have not even filmed yet in real time, so that's a little weird. <laughs> but I don't really have much going on in December. I'm basically just gonna be doing school up until, like, I think the 22nd, and then I will have nothing to do. But I do have, like, a tentative TBR for the month, which is tentative. But I'm not currently reading anything, so I don't know if I want... I don't know... See, this is the thing. I don't know if... Like, I kind of want to do a 24-hour readathon, like, but, like, a holiday edition, like I did back in 2017. <laughs> um, I kind of want to do another one of those, so maybe I will, like, do one of those on a weekend or something, but, like, have it as a separate video. Okay, you guys are probably gonna make fun of me, but I kind of want to read this. <laughs> um, I don't know why I want to read this. I just do. I read one of these Who Was Who Is books, um, a couple of days ago, like, the day after Thanksgiving, <laughs> and, I don't know, they're fun, they're like, I can just turn my brain off. So maybe I'll read this. I don't know. I, I could read it like 20 minutes, honestly. They're so short and they're mostly pictures with like 58 point font. So maybe I'll read this. I don't know. I don't want this video to be like seven centuries long. So I'm going to say goodbye until I have an actual reading update. Hey, so <laughs> um, I finished this book yesterday. Um, it is the next day. And I didn't update because I just didn't. But, um, I finished it, so it was... I already have one book for December read, and I actually kind of low-key liked this book. <laughs> um, honestly, I didn't rate it just because, like, it's literally 100 pages and four children, and I don't, like, rate... Like, I don't know, I didn't feel like I should rate this book because I don't even know what to rate it, so I just left my rating clear on Goodreads. But, like, if I had to had to rate it, it would probably be, like, a 3.5 or something. I don't know. But it was interesting, it was informational. I don't know if it's like 100% accurate because some of the things I was a little bit questioning of, so yeah. But um, it was interesting. Also, I love this cover and the spine and the back. I think it's just really cool. I did realize when I was putting that back that I do have this, which is like a larger book about Lewis and Clark if I'm ever interested. I don't think this one is for children. It could quite possibly be, but it is... Like, like, the font is not gigantic. Like, it's actually pretty small, anyway. Um, but anyway, I don't know what I'm gonna read next. I do have, like, an entire thing over here of, like, can you even see? This is gonna be rough. Those. These. <laughs> They're all, like, books about animals and stuff. So maybe I could read, like, I don't know, what's, like, a Christmassy animal? A polar bear? I got one about puffins. Um... Maybe I should read that. Honestly, I'm just really trolling everyone right now. Ooh! <laughs> I have one about caribou. Isn't that just so interesting? Wow. Oh, I have one about polar bears right there. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not gonna read this, but like, may what if I do? What if I do? No, but honestly, I have no earthly idea what I want to read. Maybe I want to read... The Lost Book of the White. I don't know. Yesterday I didn't read anything else because I got so wrapped up in Twitter drama, <laughs> which is really interesting. And, um, anyway. Um, but I kind of want to read The Lost Book of the White, perhaps? Maybe I want to read a classic? I don't know. I don't know why I did this clip, other than to say that I finished that weird Lewis and Clark book, and that <laughs> my camera has been slanted this whole time. So, yes, once I decide what I want to read and I've gotten like, pretty far into it, I will let you know what I have chosen. Hi! So, I kind of ghosted this vlog for, like, two days. 
I just had a lot going on and I was not feeling like vlogging and also the like when I finally did have time to vlog it was like pitch black outside and I it would have been like awful lighting so I just put it off until today the lighting is still not great because it's gonna be gloomy in New York for the next couple of days but I just want to give an update so like the last time I spoke to you I finished that like weird freaking <laughs> Lewis and Clark expedition book but um uh the next day or I know I think it was the same day I did end up starting the land of stories like I started my reread which is why the first book is like on the top of that shelf but um I got like 100 pages in and I was like I know I kind of want to save this I don't know if I'm gonna end up rereading it in December or if it's gonna be like pushed over to January or February but that day I did end up starting another book let me go get it. I started The Stardust Queen by Roshni Chokshi, which is not wintry at all, but it is very atmospheric, and I don't know. I just wanted to read this. I got it for Christmas last year, so I was just like, I'm gonna pick this up. It's not that long. Right now, I am currently 209 pages in. I'm about to start part two, and I believe the book is like 340 pages or something, but um, I'm really enjoying it. Um, if you don't know, this is about a girl... You know, I'm actually not going to explain it. Actually, well, okay, I'll just give a quick thing. It's about a girl named Maya who's, like, the princess to this kingdom, and she has this horoscope that tells her she's going to have a marriage of death and destruction. Then she ends up becoming the queen of this place called Acheron, and she is married to a, the king, Amar, and she just finds stuff out in secrets, and there's this these cool places, and it's just, yeah. A lot of the stuff that I want to say about it is spoilery, so, I'm not going to talk about it much, but I'm going to talk about my feelings. So, y'all know at this point, I love Roshni Chakshi. The Gilded Wolves and the Silver Serpents is one of my favorite series of all time. I have a 50-minute vlog review of it. And then I also really enjoy the Arusha and the End of Time series. It's the Pandava series, but I love that series as well, and I actually have two vlogs I have one vlog where I read um, Song of Death and one vlog where I read Tree of Wishes, and I guess I can link them in the description. I don't know. Um, depends on if I remember. But this is really good so far. It's not like Arusha, Gilded Wolves level, but it is still really good. I think the writing is great. Um, it's actually, I feel like, even more descriptive and lush than uh, the Gilded Wolves and Arusha. I mean, more than Arusha, like, for sure, but more than the Gilded Wolves also, I feel. And it's not, um, I'm not not having a good time, but it is kind of confusing, and I feel like the plot is sometimes lost in the, like, such decadent writing, but... It is really good. I like the fantasy aspects. The world building is not the best, but our um, Roshni Chakshi, like, I don't feel like that's where she thrives. She really thrives with characters and, like, interpersonal relationships and also super intricate plots. I will say this book does have an intricate plot, but less so than the Pandava series and the Gilded Wolves. I am still enjoying it. I love Roshni Chakshi, but I don't think... Like, I feel like this will end up being my least favorite series from her, just by default. But I, like, I know, you, like, I, okay. Um, I, where part one left off, I feel like part two is going to be even better. So I definitely will end up continuing and finishing the series. There's only one more book, and then there is a short story collection. And I, I will definitely read those. Probably not this month, but eventually. So yeah, I'm hoping to finish this book today. I do want to take a break because I just finished school, online school, but um, yeah. Once I finish this, I have absolutely no idea what I will read next, but we can decide together. So it is Saturday, happy weekend, and um, I basically spent the whole day doing work. I had to write an essay in the morning, which I did, thankfully. Um, and then I just did some stuff, and also I was going to update now, but I realized that I forgot to update about the Stardust Queen, which I finished yesterday, so I'm going to do that, but, um, yeah, the day just sort of got away from me, which is annoying, um, because it's annoying when it happens on a weekend, because it's just not what I would like. Uh, I want to sort of savor the weekend a little bit, but, 
it's fine. Holiday break will be soon. Honestly, Jesus better take the wheel for these next two and a half, two-ish weeks of school that I have until holiday break, because my brain cells are revolting against me. Yeah, I just truly did not do much. And then I read just now, and I'll update about what I read after I talk about the star touched Queen. So, let's talk about it. So, I think the last time I updated, I was, like, about to start part two. I have since finished. I finished yesterday, um, I think right after that clip that I filmed, and I enjoyed the book. I ended up giving it, like, a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I think I'm more forgiving of it just because I love Rashi Choksi's books, so, and I know that she improves a lot from this debut. Um, I will still be reading book two and then the short story collection for sure, um, but this just wasn't my favorite. It was a little too all over the place, like I didn't feel like it had a actual plot. It sort of was just like doing things and there was not really a reason for that things. It, it just seemed like the plot kind of got away from her as she was writing. And that's fine, but it was also just a little frustrating, and like, I feel like I thought part two would be better, but I feel like it was sort of just more of the same, if not a little bit more disappointing. The best part about part two was that we got introduced to Kamala, who is this horse that's like flesh-eating, and she was cool, but yeah, the ending was also pretty anticlimactic. It happened really, really fast, and I feel like the things that were in the plot didn't really serve much of a purpose. It was sort of just, like, done to have more pages, like, if that makes any sense. And this is already a short book, and I don't really know what I'm saying, but it just was not my favorite. I don't know if I would ever, like, reread this, but, like, it's interesting enough that I would continue on, and, like, I'm not mad at this book. I still gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was lush, and I liked the world, and I did like the characters, but the plot was just sort of not really it for me. So, that's that. And then the book that I just started was Winter Garden by Kristen Hanna. I was originally going to start my reread of The Land of Stories. Why do I look like this? <laughs> so yeah, I was going to start my reread for The Land of Stories, but then I was like, you know what? I just want to read something different. So I wanted to read a wintry book, and this has winter in the title. So I was like, it should be promising. And I read part of the description on Goodreads, and I was like, okay. Like, I read, I don't even know, if because I got this for Christmas last year. <laughs> I don't remember if I had even looked into it. I was sort of just like, ooh, Winter, Kristen Hanna, I am interested in her books, and then just ordered it, <laughs> or like asked for it. So, yeah, but I looked at the Goodreads description, and I was like, that's cool. And then I got like six chapters in, or no, not that, I got like 50 pages in, and then I finally decided to read the synopsis on the back, and I was like, okay, because it says that it takes place in... 1941, it mentions 1941 and 2000, and the prologue of the book takes place in 1972, and then the chapter one and, like, the rest of the books takes place in 2000. And I was like, what is up with this 1941 Leningrad sort of storyline, and why does it keep mentioning this stuff in the back, like, on the description? And I was like, that's interesting, so I kept reading, and then finally there was, like, an excerpt of, like, this story that their mom was telling them, the two main characters, Nina and Meredith, and it was, like, it never even mentioned Leningrad, like, we just figured out that it was set in Leningrad, like, 20 pages ago, and I'm on page 194. I read all 194 pages in one sitting. I don't know why, it's not, like, super addicting or anything, I was just, like, what is going to happen? Because I'm just confused. This book does not really have much of a plot. It's definitely a character study. And I have read the first, like, hundred-ish pages of The Nightingale. I read it back, like, almost two years ago. And I don't know why I put it down. I think I... It's not that I wasn't enjoying it. I think I just, like, time got away from me. So I knew that I liked Kristen Hanna's writing because I was inclined enough to, like, look into more of her books and ask for more of them. 
but this is just not my favorite so far. It's mostly, like, I thought it would be a historical fiction, which, like, it takes place in 2000, and when was this book written? It says this book was written in 2010, so, like, is that even considered historical fiction, a book that takes place 10 years ago? That's like calling The Dark Artifices historical fiction because it takes place in 2012. It's sort of just, like, a story about sisters, and, like, that would be fine, and, like, but I was excited about the historical part because it mentions in the Goodreads description and on the back of the book, it mentions 1941, and I was like, okay, maybe we'll get, like, back and forth, like, 1941, it's, like, one thing, and then 2000 is, like, another thing, and, like, two storylines or something, but no, it's sort of just their mother telling them a little bit of stuff about 1941, like, this folktale thing. It's kind of weird, and I don't know how I feel about it yet. Honestly, I feel like my opinion on this book was changing, like, every five pages. Like, I would be, like, super into it, and I'd be like, oh, this is pretty good. And then I'd be like, what is going on? I am bored. So, we shall see. This book is not very long. It's 391 pages. So, I have, like, 200... Is that right? No, I have, like, a hundred... Can I even do math? I have, like, 200 pages left. So... We shall see. I might read more today. I might wait till tomorrow. But I'm just interested to see how this story progresses and how it ends. So that should be an interesting update when I finish this book. So it is the next day and I just finished Winter Garden by Kristen Hanna and I just sat down and finished the entire book in one sitting. I am broken. <laughs> so I had like read the Goodreads review and as you can tell in the last clip I wasn't like loving this book. It was a good book but it just wasn't what I expected. Those last like what 200 pages were so good and I have no idea what to say. I am just broken. So I think I don't think this is a full five stars just because of the like beginning. It was a little rocky for me but I think this is like a 4.5, 4.75. Definitely one of my new favorite um, historical fiction books and I... is this book considered a historical fiction? I think it is but it's not like technically a historical fiction. It takes place in 2000, in 2000 and then 2001 but there are like snippets of um, 1941 where the mother is telling them stories and the snippets get larger and larger as the book progresses and they last like one to two chapters long uh, towards the end and uh, I just loved this book. I think it is so great and I feel like if you want to read this book and you want to know what it's about, definitely read the Goodreads description because I read the Goodreads description and I think it's a way better testament to what the book is about than um, just reading the back. I think this book is just so great. It is... the ending came so full circle. I was getting honestly teary-eyed in like the last couple of chapters and then especially that epilogue, I was just so overcome with emotions. I think it came so full circle. It's so hopeful. It's so beautiful. It's like haunting. And I will definitely be thinking about this book for like years uh, to come. And honestly, I might end up bumping it up to five stars, but um, right now it's sitting at like a 4.5, 4.75. I just thought it was so beautiful. And it like hurts. <laughs> like honestly. I just don't know what to say. And I can't really talk about it because, like, it, I would spoil the entire book, but it's just, like, this slow progression. It's, like, I know I was being pretty, not negative, but I just felt pretty ambivalent towards it in the first, like, 150, 100, uh, 200 pages, but, like, once I actually knew what I was getting into and I read the rest of the book, I was just like, in, in rapture. Like, I, it was just so good. I honestly don't know what I want to read next. I kind of just really want to read The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. Um, I, this book has been, I've been, I've had my eye on it since like 2017, and maybe 2018, but I, it is gigantic, and I have read the first like 100-ish pages, um, but I, it like got away from me, and I think I read it back in 2018, um, and then, but it just sort of got away from me. 
But I feel like I'm gonna read it. Um, it's very long. It is... how long? It is 564 pages long. Um, Winter Garden was like 391, so this is quite larger, um, as you can tell. Literally, look at these two books together. Like, what? <laughs> so yeah, I think this is what I'm gonna read next. Um, it is, like, this is definitely historical fiction. It follows two sisters. Um, I feel like that's kind of Kristen Hannah's thing. It's like historical fiction with sisters. But, um, this follows Vianne and Isabel. Vianne is the older sister, Isabel is the younger sister. Vianne lives, uh, has a, a daughter, and it takes place in, I'm not sure the actual, um, year, but it is during World War II. And Vianne is, um, I think this German soldier comes into her house, and they live in France, um, and her husband has just gone off to fight in the war, and, um, this German soldier comes and, like, basically invades their house. Like, he doesn't invade their house, but he, like, stays there. <laughs> he, like, uh, he, like, orders them to, like, let him stay there, basically. And then Isabel, I think, goes off to, um, fight in the resistance or something. I'm not really sure, but, um, I know it has, like, romance subplots, and it's really just a story about sisters and the war, and I am in a real historical fiction mood after reading this masterpiece. So yes, I'm really, really excited, and also, this is, I, I think her most, yeah, this is definitely her most popular book, um, Winter Garden, I think, is, like, one of her most popular books, but this is, like, definitely her most famous, um, yeah, it says, it is a Goodreads, it was the Goodreads Best Historical Fiction Novel of the Year, it was a People's Choice Favorite Fiction winner, number one indie next selection, um, it was a number one New York Times bestseller, it's soon to be a major motion picture, so yeah, I'm just really, really excited to read this, and this is what I'm gonna read next, so yeah, I will update you once I have made some progress. It is the next day, and I had a pretty good day. I went, I had school, online school, and then I filmed my autumn reading wrap-up, and then I read 100 pages of The Nightingale. So, I didn't update at all yesterday, but I am now on page 212, because I read 100 pages yesterday, and 100 pages just now. And so far, I'm really, really enjoying the book. I really like the writing, and the characters, and the setting, and just the way that the plot is unraveling bit by bit. I still don't think I've gotten to the part that I have, like, read to yet. Like, I feel like, because when I read it, when I started it, I read the library copy, and the, and it was a hardcover, and I think the hardcover is around, like, 400 pages, and this one is over, like, 550, so I think I was around, like, 200-ish pages into the hardcover, which would be, like, I don't know, I still haven't gotten to the part that I have, like, read up to yet, so that's that, but I'm just really, really enjoying it. One thing that is annoying me is that Isabel, who is the younger sister, she's just so, like, hard-headed that, like, Yes, like, this Nazi, or it's, like, a German soldier that has come into Vianne's house to, like, fill it there. Uh, she's just being so nasty to him and rude, and it's, like, yes, obviously Nazis are bad, and the, this man is, like, part of an awful organization, but he could easily hurt you or your sister or your sister's daughter. Like, you need to calm down and... So yeah, Isabel's kind of getting on my nerves, but we I've gotten to the part where she and Vianne are kind of separated, so I'm interested to see how their, like, separate stories, like, what happens in the next 300-plus pages. So, that's going well. I'm really excited to continue on. I'm just having a really fun time reading so far, and I know a lot of people complained that Kristen Hanna has, like, purple prose, but I really like it because... It's part of the journey. It's part of the book. It really paints a picture. And yeah, I can't really talk about specific plot things. Um, maybe I'll end up doing a review for this book. I don't know. But there are just a lot of things that make me feel all the emotions. So yeah, maybe I will end up doing a review. I don't know. But there's just a lot of things in this book that I want to talk about, but I can't because I can't spoil it because this is a reading vlog, not a review. But yeah, I just... Oh my god, this book is so good so far, and I still have a lot left, so 
I will update you next time I have read some more. Hi, so it is Tuesday. <laughs> um, I... My brain is just, like, not here right now, so if it seems like I'm kind of out of it, I am. <laughs> Honestly, I just had a pretty, like, not good day. <laughs> like, I feel like I'm just running on empty. You know, that feeling when you just, like, have zero energy? And I don't know, today just felt like a century long. And I just wanted to be over with. <laughs> I did get some reading done. I am now on page 383 of The Nightingale. I don't have it with me. It's on my bookshelf, like right there in the stack. But, um, I'm really enjoying it so far still. Um, I actually read some reviews on Goodreads and I saw, oh my god, this is like, this is really bothering me. Um, I saw that a lot of people said that the book was slow. And I do agree that there's no, like, overarching, exciting plot. It's really just, like, these different events that are happening to shape Vianne and Isabel's life. And I kind of like that better instead of just having, like, this plot that, like, like, instead of having, like, a mission that both of them need to complete. Um, because I feel like it is a better depiction of life. And it says on the back of the book that it's, like, the women's war. Um, and I like how it is shown that it's sort of just, like, the different events are, like, bricks in a wall that are forming their life. And I feel like it is a more honest portrayal of what life is like. Because most of us don't have, like, storylines. Like, we have our lives. And each event is, like, a stepping stone in that if that makes any sense. <laughs> so I really like how that's done. I also saw some people criticizing how, like, Vianne is sort of just complacent in with, um, whatever the frick his name is, Beck, uh, billeting at their house. And, uh, and a lot of people, like, praise Isabelle's character in comparison. And I don't really understand that. I honestly think it's the other way around. I think Vianne is a more, like, I feel like she is more realistic than Isabel, because Isabel is just like, I hate the Nazis, they are stupid, like, literally saying it to Beck, who is a German soldier, and literally has the power to just kill her, Vianne, and Sophie, like, just, like, you know, just, like, he can do it easily, and he will not get in trouble. And while well, Vianne is more tolerant of him staying there because she knows the implications of if she just, like, was like Isabel and, like, going after him and, like, yelling at him and, like, talking about how the Nazis suck. And the Nazis do suck, <laughs> but I feel like this book takes place in 1941. Isabel has way too much of a 21st century outlook on what is happening, while Vianne has, like, a m mid... 20th century view. She hates the Nazis, she thinks what they're doing is absolutely abhorrent, but she knows that she can't express that or else it will just like, it'll, it'll bring bad fortune to her and her family and especially her child. And she's also, like, she has different priorities than Isabel. She is a mother and she has a much harder backstory. Like, she has had two miscarriages, she had a child that died very, very early in his life, and her husband is off in the war, and, like, she doesn't know if he'll ever return. And her friend is Jewish, and it's, like, this whole complicated web, and she's, like, yeah, she's a mother as well, and she has to deal with this German soldier in her house, and she has to sort of tiptoe and just make sure that she's doing what the soldier... Like, I don't know, it's complicated. But Isabel is just some stupid, like, 18-year-old who's like, I hate the Nazis, and, like, saying it to the Nazis' faces. And it's like, girl, you're gonna get murdered. Stop. Like, literally, calm the frick down. You are going to get shot or something. Like, you need to stop. So, yeah, Isabel is kind of getting on my nerves, but I'm liking her character more. Um, yeah, also another thing that I like about the book is that there are these... There's only been two so far. It was chapter one and then, like, some other random chapter um, before, but I just, like, the chapter that I stopped at, like, the one I'm about to begin, 
is one of these chapters where it takes place in 1995 in Oregon, while the rest of the book takes place in occupied France in 1941. Um, so it takes place in 1995 in on the Oregon coast, and it is first person, so we don't know who is speaking. So it could be Isabel, it could be the Anne, it could be a totally different person, but I feel like it's definitely either Vianne or Isabel. And it's interesting trying to predict, and I'm interested to see if this third chapter that's structured that way will make me think differently. The plot so far is definitely making me think that it's, like, I feel like my opinion as to who the first person perspective is from has changed, like, a bunch of times already. So I'm interested to find out who that is. Hopefully I can finish the book tomorrow because I have half day. So I'm done with school at 12 and I'll have just the rest of the day to read. So that should be fun. And yeah, I can't talk anymore. My brain is like... Like, I just feel like my brain cells are dying. So I'm going to stop this clip now. So see you later. I just finished The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. I'm bald. Like, literally, I can't. I, I'm getting way too emotional. And it's been 20 seconds. I... My brain cannot compute what happened in the last 150, like, 150 to 100 pages of this book. Silent Tears have been streaming down my eyes for 15 minutes. I told my... Like, she was sitting in the room, like, across from me, and I was like, I don't even care that I'm spoiling this book for you, I need to tell you what happens. I'm not over it, like, I had to, like, spend five minutes in the bathroom drying my face and, like, getting the redness and the puffiness out of my eyes. The whole ordeal of this book, like, literally from page four, like, thirty to the end, for, like, I, for, like, over a hundred pages, I was getting so emotional, I was getting so attached to the book. I love the characters, all the characters. The last chapter freaking broke me. I know that people said that they cried in this book, but Kristen Hanna needs to, like, publicly apologize to me for chapter 39, because I'll never be the same. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not even doing that stupid booktuber thing where it's like you're crying over a book because it, like, gets you views. I am honestly devastated. And I'm mad at this book. The ending was just perfect. It, like, it came around and the ending... Freaking V. Anne has been through so much crap. And I just want to, like, go give her a hug. I don't even care if that, like, seems like a spoiler because if you have not read this book, what are you doing with your life? Honestly, the person that was narrating those first-person chapters, I was right. Towards the end, I was like, maybe it's someone else. It, I, like, I was right in the beginning, like, dirt for the first chapter. That was from that perspective, which was the first chapter of the book. I was like, I think it's this person. And it was. Honestly, I loved both the main characters so much. Um, out of the two, see, I don't know. Considering what happened to Isabel in the last, like, hundred-ish pages of the book, I don't know who had a rougher life. I still think Vianne did, because Isabel's thing was, like, like, ugh, I can't describe it. I can't explain it. But, like, I think Vianne had this sadder life, just overall. All the things that she's been through were just heartbreaking and devastating for just, like, it was just, I can't. And the way that she dealt with the things, I was kind of frustrated about one plot point, but the way that it was explained in the epilogue, the last chapter, it wasn't officially labeled epilogue, but it was the last chapter, and it felt very epilogue-like. And even the last, like, paragraph, and then the last line, honestly, I am just gonna have to sit and reflect for a moment about what this book did to me. Okay, I'm gonna try to like maintain my composure. I literally just finished the book, so like this is raw feelings. Slew of crap <laughs> happened in the last 160 pages. 
bumped this up, like, all the way up here to a five star. Like, this might low-key end up being my favorite book of the year. I was like, maybe it'll be a 4.5, but I just round it up to a five. Freaking no. Like, literally, I think this is either on par or, like, it'll be above The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Like, I am, like, very, like, biased towards character-driven stories, and this book did all of the characters so well. Even Beanne's husband, who we only see, like, a, for a little while. Like, I was like, he is a fully, like, well-rounded character. Every single character in this book could have been the main character. Like, could be a main, a main character. None of them were one-dimensional, they were all three-dimensional, all so perfectly crafted. This is probably the most satisfying ending I have ever read in my life. Um, it just came full circle. So good. Like, honestly, this is one of my new favorite books of all time. It's my favorite historical fiction I've ever read, and it's my new- it's like one of my new favorite books of all time. My favorite historical fiction before this was probably The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, if that is considered a historical fiction. This freaking bumped that, like, all so far away. Like, honestly, this book... Like, honestly, if you have not read this book, you should be sorry for yourself, because it's just so good. But I would recommend reading this when you're in a good mental state. Um, don't read this if you're, like, unstable at all, because I feel unstable after reading this book. <laughs> so yeah, this book is a masterpiece. Um, I will not be able to read anything else today, because I need to, like, let my brain process this masterpiece. Um, I think the next book I'm gonna read is probably All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr, um, because I want to cry again. <laughs> I'm just gonna take a moment, <laughs> aka the rest of the day, to reflect, and then I will be back tomorrow, so pray for me. Hi. Long time no see. Um, it's been quite a while. It is now Sunday. I don't even remember which day I updated. I think it was probably Wednesday. So it's been quite a while. I have not vlogged, but I have been reading. Um, I think the last time I spoke to you I was emotionally devastated about The Nightingale, and I'm still not over it, but I think I did talk about the book that I was starting next, and I am now over halfway through. Um, so I started On the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. I am currently on page 315, so yeah, I'm more than halfway through. I think the book is 530 pages. So, I'm not going to do that math, but, yes. So, if you don't know what this book is about, I don't know where you've been, because it's, like, one of the biggest books of the, like, past decade, I think. It was a Pulitzer Prize winner, and it was on the New York Times list for, like, 130 weeks, so, yeah. But if you don't know, basically, this book follows two main characters. It is, like, a slice of life approach, so we follow both of these characters throughout their lives. The first one is Marie Lore, who is a young French girl living with her father, and when she's very young, she goes blind, and to help her, her father basically creates these miniature replicas of the city, and he gives her these giant books of braille. He'll go into the city with her and then spin her around three times and then just be like, show me the way home. And so yeah, he's really great. He loves his daughter so much, and she loves him. But then, the Nazis invade their city, and they have to flee to a place called St. Malo, which is a walled city, and live it with her great-uncle in this really tall building near the sea. And then our other main character is Werner Fenning, who is living a- he is a orphan, and he lives with his sister Judah and their caretaker, Frau Elena, and Basically, he ends up getting enlisted in a Hitler Youth Academy to be a Nazi in training. He, um, so yeah, we basically follow both of their lives, um, through, like, I think the book starts in 1930-something, and then we sort of go through, like, 1940 and 41 and 42. The part I'm at is 1942. So, um, yeah, and then there's also smaller sections in the book, um, so the book is divided into parts, and... 
every other section, it takes place in 1944. So it's sort of, we're going, we saw that in the beginning, and then we went back to the late 1930s, early 1940s, and then we had that section for like 100 pages, and then we went back, and then we had that section for like 20 pages, and then we go back, and it's sort of going back and forth, and I'm guessing by the end, the timelines will meet up. Uh, but yeah, I am loving this book. The writing is just impeccable. Like, there is this one line that I wanted to read, and I literally just opened up to it, which is weird. Anyway, it's on page 45, and it says, basically, I already told you that she's blind, but the way that the author describes things from her perspective is just so interesting. So, yeah, here's a quote. It says, She has no memories of her mother, but imagines her as white, a soundless brilliance. Her father radiates a thousand colors, opal, strawberry red, deep russet, wild green, a smell like oil and metal, the feel of a locked tumbler sliding home. The sound of his key rings chiming as he walks. He is an olive green when he talks to a department head, an escalating series of oranges when he speaks to Mademoiselle Fleury from the greenhouses, a bright red when he tries to cook. He glows sapphire when he sits over his workbench in the evening, humming almost inaudibly as he works the tip of his cigarette gleaming a prismatic blue. That's some good freaking stuff. So I actually read this book because I, I'd seen it around like a ton of times, but what like gave me the incentive to buy it was Read with Cindy. So yeah, I got this book for Christmas last year and I watched her review and I was like, that book seems freaking great. And so now I'm finally reading it after a year. <laughs> yeah, I really am enjoying the book. I It has really short chapters, so it's quick to get through, but I've been trying to savor it, so I've been reading it for a couple of days now, and I kind of just want to finish it today, um, but I do have, like, over 200 pages left. So, we shall see what happens, but I'm planning on going to Barnes & Noble today with my family, so that should be fun, but yeah, I'm not going to vlog in the store because I'm not about that life, but yeah. Once I have read more, I will come in and check with you. And maybe by the time this, that I finish this book, I'll be crying my eyes out. We shall see. So it is the next day, and I have just read the last, like, 215 pages of All the Light You Cannot See by Anthony Jor, and five stars. <laughs> I can't really talk about the ending of this book, but I will be doing a mashup review of this and the Nightingale and maybe Winter Garden. I have not fully decided yet, um, but I feel like I would need to think more about Winter Garden and see if I have enough thoughts to, like, put into a full review video. But yes, I am definitely going to be doing a review video for this and the Nightingale, but it probably won't be coming out until, like, late January or February. I don't know, but the... Anyway, the most important question is, did I cry? No. I did, however, tear up at some of the ending bits. I feel like when I reread this book in the future, because I definitely will reread it, I think I will glean a lot more from the story. But honestly, this was so good. Like, and the writing, like, this is definitely, this is definitely the best writing I've read the entire year. It is just so, like, beautiful. And I just... Mm. Oh, I do have one complaint about the book. It is very slow. Like, I was wishing that something would, like, happen. Like, the Nightingale was slow, and it was a slice-of-life approach, just like All the Light We Cannot See. Although I think All the Light We Cannot See is definitely more of a slice-of-life approach. There really is not a central plot at all. It's sort of just the two characters, and then there's, like, kind of a small subplot with, like, this stone that is in this museum. But other than that, it's kind of just, like, hanging out with the characters. And I did have pretty high expectations, so I think that's why I'm not, like, it not, like, super effusively, like, this is a five star. But, um, yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> Hello. So, I just came to wrap up this vlog. I have, like, basically no battery. So we're gonna try to do this quick. But I'm doing this vlog style because I feel like... This is a vlog, and I haven't done it vlog style this entire time. So we're going to do it for the very last clip. <laughs> so, um, this is good lighting. Let's just stay here. So, um, I had a good week. I read a bunch of books. I actually don't know how many books I read, but you could 
count if you'd like. I'll put them in the description box. But, yeah, that is for this video. I will see you next week with my 24-hour readathon. Um, yeah, I'm also posting some other videos this month, but that is what's coming next. So, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. All my social media links are in the description box below. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you next week. Bye!